Today's lesson is called Rappaccini's Daughter. Hello everyone, my name is Jeff. Hi, I'm Roger. Today we're going to continue talking about our featured short story this month, Rappaccini's Daughter. As we mentioned last time, it's a story written by the American author Nathaniel Hawthorne, who is mostly known for his book The Scarlet Letter. But we're talking about another of his works of literature, Rappaccini's Daughter. Now, it's all about Giovanni Guascanti. He's a student. He's just arrived at Padua. He's rented a room there. He looks out of his window. He sees this wonderful garden. It's owned by a doctor. The doctor comes out, and his daughter's with him. And he is smitten by his daughter. Oh, she's so attractive. But there are some strange things about her and the doctor, especially about her, the way she breathes on the insects. And when she grabs his arm, it turns kind of purple. It gets burnt, right? Yes. Where Beatrice had grabbed Giovanni, where she had touched him, there was a purple handprint burned onto his skin. She left that handprint there because, like I said before, she is poisonous. How interesting. All right, folks, let's go ahead and take a short break. But when we come back, we'll start reading from the second portion of our story called Rappaccini's Daughter. Giovanni couldn't stay away, and the two soon fell in love. But Beatrice never let him kiss or even touch her. Meanwhile, a professor of Giovanni's warned him that Rappaccini would do anything in the name of science, including exposing his own daughter to poison until she became poisonous too. He gave Giovanni a small silver bottle filled with an antidote that could counteract the poison. Hello, 各位好。第一部分我们看到的片语 in the name of something or somebody 表示以点点点之名，打着点点点的名号，指以某人或某事做点点点的正当理由。例如。Lawyers say they work in the name of justice, but many of them are dishonest. 律师说他们的工作是伸张正义，但也有许多律师并不正直。另外，这个片语除了上面的意思，也可以指为了点点点。我们可以说 ，Dr. Brown volunteered his medical services to impoverished patients of third world countries, all in the name of humanity. Brown 医生自愿为第三世界国家的贫困病患提供医疗服务，全是为了人道。Okay, so here's what happens next. Of course. Giovanni got burnt when she touched him and left kind of a purple scar there. But Giovanni couldn't stay away, and the two soon fell in love. But Beatrice never let him kiss or even touch her. I guess I wouldn't blame her for that.、Uh, he's going to get seriously injured if he comes in contact with her. He could not stay away. He could not resist her. To stay away just means don't go to some place. Stay away from my house. Don't come over here ever again. So he couldn't stay away. You could also say he couldn't keep away. He couldn't resist her. He was enthralled. He was captivated, and the two of them soon fell in love. But she had, I guess, some conditions. You can love me. That's okay. No problem there. But no,、nope, you can't kiss me, and you can't touch me. Stay away. But I guess that's good enough for him. Just being near her might be good enough. Yeah. Remember, Beatrice is poisonous, but she's still a good person. Apparently, she's got a good heart. She's innocent, and she doesn't want Giovanni to get hurt. So, even though they do fall in love, Beatrice insists. That he never touch her. Don't kiss me. Don't touch me at all. Even though we're in love, which is tough. But at the same time, remember she knows that her breath and her touch are poisonous. So yes, Giovanni, I know we're in love, but I don't want you to die. So don't touch me. Don't kiss me. Anyways, let's move on. The next sentence says: Meanwhile, a professor of Giovanni's warned him that Rappaccini would do anything in the name of science. Including exposing his own daughter to poison until she became poisonous, 
too. So there you go. Giovanni, remember, he's a student. He's at school. And apparently he tells someone what he's been seeing and what he's been experiencing. Okay, yeah, I live next to this garden. It's owned by a doctor named Rappuccini. And he has a beautiful daughter, but I can't touch her. It's a bad situation. It's a sad state of affairs. And here this person, this professor, hears Giovanni out and warns Giovanni. Yeah, Rappuccini, I know the guy. He is kind of a mad scientist. He would do anything in the name of science, including exposing his own daughter to poison until she became poisonous as well. So there you go. I wasn't joking. Yes, Rappuccini's daughter is literally poisonous. But let's go ahead and backtrack a little bit here. Let's talk about the word professor. It says here, one of Giovanni's professors warned him about Rappuccini. But what is a professor? A professor is kind of like a high-ranking teacher. Usually professors work at universities or at colleges and stuff like that. Yeah, a professor is a teacher or a researcher who works at a university or at a college who has a PhD. That's important, okay? You get your bachelor's, then your master's, and then a PhD, and then your doctor so-and-so, and you can become a professor. But here, of course, Giovanni is in this town, Padua, going to school there, and he's taking a class, and this professor as you said, knows about Rappuccini. And he says, hey, you got to watch out for that guy because he's really dedicated to science. He'll do anything in the name of science. He'll do anything for science. If it's about science, then he's going to do it. He is so dedicated to science. And that includes exposing his dear own daughter to poison. He'll expose her to poison so much as part of his experiments that she herself will become poisonous too. Perhaps that's the reason why she can kill in sex by breathing on them and why she left a big scar on Giovanni's arm when she touched him. There you go. He'll do anything in the name of science. He really believes in science, so he'll do anything for or on behalf of science. Anyways, it says here that he, the professor, gave Giovanni a small silver bottle filled with an antidote that could counteract the poison. So here, I guess this professor feels bad for Giovanni. He knows that he's in love with Rappuccini's daughter, Beatrice there, that's her name. So this professor gave Giovanni some antidote, something that could counteract the poison. So maybe if he kisses her and gets sick, he'll be able to take this antidote and the effects of the poison won't hurt him. Right. An antidote might be necessary if you're bitten by a poisonous snake, for example, and hopefully she'll become less poisonous in the future and he'll be able to kiss her, hold her, touch her, stuff like that. Okay, let's move on now to the next paragraph. We'll listen first. Giovanni was unwilling to believe his professor until he saw his own breath kill a spider. Furious that Beatrice had contaminated him, he ran into the garden and confronted her. She insisted that her father's science was to blame and that all she ever wanted was to love him. In response, Giovanni suggested they drink from the bottle together and be cured. Agreeing to try it, Beatrice took a sip. confront. Ryan went out of his house to confront the man attempting to steal his car. Ryan 走出家门去与那个想偷他车子的男人对峙. 另外, confront 除了上面的意思外, 还有面对, 挑战, 困难等之意. 所以可以说, Janet confronts challenges rather than avoiding them. Janet 勇于面对挑战, 而不是选择逃避. 接着我们看到片语, be to blame, 代表, 为, 点点点, 负责任, 受责备, 用法为, somebody or something, be to blame for something. 举例来说, Mary was to blame for the terrible mess in the kitchen. 厨房这么乱都要怪Mary. 另外,补充其他blame的相关片语, 可以用, take the blame来表示承担责任。我们可以说, 
Eddie took the blame for the project not being completed on time. Eddie 负起该专案未能如期完成的责任。All right, moving on. Giovanni, it says, Giovanni was unwilling to believe his professor until he saw his own breath kill a spider. Now this is a little bit confusing, so let's unpack things. Okay, it's not that Giovanni was unwilling to believe that the professor has given him a real antidote. Apparently, he believes in the antidote. What he's unwilling to believe is that anyone would ever expose their own daughter, let's say, to poison until that person became poisonous. Too okay. Giovanni's not willing to believe this, but this is what the professor said. This Rappaccini guy, he's a bit crazy. He would do anything in the name of science, even if it meant turning his daughter poisonous or making her poisonous. So there you go. Giovanni was unwilling to believe the nasty stuff that this professor said about Rappaccini until he saw that one day his own breath. Killed a spider. Yeah, his own breath is now capable of killing a spider. So it's been confirmed. Okay, not only is Rappaccini a bad guy, but he has in fact contaminated his daughter, and somehow or another, the daughter has now contaminated Giovanni. And yeah, furious that Beatrice had contaminated him, made him poisonous, he ran into the garden and confronted her. That's right. So maybe he was in the garden and. And he saw a little spider there. Hello, little spider. How are you? Let me look at your web. But his breath killed that spider, and now he realized that he was becoming poisonous. So he was furious. He was absolutely furious, very angry. So he confronted. Beatrice in the garden. If you confront someone, of course you face them because you want some answers. You either want answers from them or they confront you to get answers from you, and you have no choice but to give them. So yes, what's this all about, Beatrice? I'm becoming poisonous. You tell me right now what is happening. There you go, and he's furious. By the way, if you're furious, you are mad. You're super mad. You're extremely. Angry, you're mad, extremely angry, or filled with rage. For example, I was furious when the taxi driver let me off at the wrong stop. Yes, that driver kept driving me around and finally got me to the right place. But then he charged me extra money. I thought, hey, why can't you do your job correctly? Yeah, that taxi driver sure did make me. Furious. Anyways, let's get back to our story. Okay, Beatrice has just been confronted by Giovanni, and she's not happy. And she insisted that her father's science was to blame, and that all she ever wanted was to love him, Giovanni. So here, she insisted that science, her father's science, was to blame. Yeah, don't blame me. I'm not guilty. My father's science is the culprit. Blame my father's science. That's the problem here. Now, in response, Giovanni suggested they drink from the bottle together and be cured. Remember, the professor gave him the antidote in a special container. So he said, "Hey, I've got this antidote." Let's、uh, drink this together. Let's drink from the bottle, and we'll be cured. We'll no longer be poisonous, and your father won't be able to hurt us anymore. We can run away and get married. We can hug each other. We can kiss each other. We can give each other back rubs or whatever. It'll be okay. We won't be poisonous anymore if we drink from the bottle of this antidote. There you go. Beatrice is game here. She wants to try some of this antidote. She agrees to try it. Yes, agreeing to try it. Our story continues. Beatrice took a sip, i.e., she took a small drink of the antidote, wanting to be cured. All right, everyone. With that, it's time for us to take a break. But don't go away. We'll be back with the thrilling conclusion of our story right after this. Just then, Rappaccini came into the garden. Beatrice demanded to know how he could inflict such doom on his own child, and he said he did it to make her strong. "I would fain have been loved, not feared," Beatrice cried. Saying goodbye to Giovanni, she fell to the ground, dead. 
The remedy countered the poison in her veins, but in the process, it killed Beatrice as well. inflict. 指遭受、打击、损害等。像是 The angry cat inflicted some serious scratches on Sarah. 这只愤怒的猫对Sarah狠狠抓了几下。另外补充inflict的相关单字 Self-inflicted S-E-L-F-I-N-F-L-I-C-T-E-D Self-inflicted 这个字是形容词指自作自受的自己造成的 我们可以说, the patient died of a self-inflicted gunshot wound. 那名伤患因开枪打伤自己而身亡。再来我们看到名词 doom,有厄运,结束之意. 例如, when the villagers saw the volcano erupting, they knew that doom was near. 当村民看见火山爆发时, 心知死亡将至。Doom除了可以当名词, 也可以当动词, 指使失败, 注定。所以可以说, Poor management doomed the company from the beginning. 管理不良让公司一开始就注定失败。最后我们看到单字, Vain, 这个字是名词, 用来指静脉。举例来说, the nurse tried several times before she successfully stuck the needle into a vein. 护士在成功将针插进静脉前尝试了好几次。另外, vein除了静脉的意思, 还可以指矿脉, 岩脉。所以我们可以说, We had to use our mountaineering axes to climb a thin vein of ice. 我们得用登山斧爬上薄薄的冰脉。Okay, let's continue to summarize our story for today. Remember where we just left off, they had decided to drink from the bottle and be cured of this problem. So just then, Rappuccini came into the garden. Remember, that's the father, that's the doctor. And they were about to drink from the bottle together and be cured of that poisonous disease. But then the father comes into the garden and Beatrice demanded to know how he could inflict such doom on his own child, and he said he did it to make her strong. So we could say that Beatrice confronted her father. How could you do such a thing? How could you inflict such doom on your own daughter? So here we've got the verb to inflict, which means to cause problems for someone else to cause suffering for someone else. So how could you inflict such doom? Doom here just means a sad destiny, something that's going to happen to you that is bad. So how could you do this to me? How could you do such a mean thing to me? After all, I am your own child. And he said, well, I'll tell you, Beatrice, my dear daughter, I did it to make you strong. I did it for your own good. Yeah, how could you inflict such doom, such a terrible fate on me? And apparently Rappuccini looked her in the eye and he said he did it to make her strong. Hmm, so maybe this professor there was wrong. Maybe Rappuccini isn't a mad scientist. He just kind of looks like it. And this has got me to thinking, this antidote that the professor gave them, is this going to work or not? If the professor was wrong about Rappuccini, maybe he's wrong about the antidote as well. So right now, I'm a little bit scared. Anyways, Beatrice, though, she is still unhappy with her father. She wants to know how you could do this to me. And then she also says, I would fain have been loved, not feared. Beatrice cried, i.e., people fear me because they think I'm poisonous. I would have rather been a person that people could love. I wanted to be loved, but here, you've inflicted this fate on me. People are going to be afraid of me forever, but no, I've taken the antidote. I am going to be well again. But hey, that's not the case. There's a huge twist here. Saying goodbye to Giovanni, she fell to the ground dead. So apparently the antidote from the professor actually killed her. 
My goodness, this is a terrible story. It sounds like it has a bad ending or a sad ending here. So yes, indeed, she said goodbye to Giovanni. Adieu, Giovanni. Goodbye. She fell to the ground. She was dead, and the remedy countered the poison in her veins. But in the process, it killed Beatrice as well. So yes, we're describing this antidote as also being a remedy. A remedy is some kind of chemical, maybe some kind of food, some kind of medicine that will cure your disease. Of course, we're always looking for a cure or a remedy. To cancer, a remedy for cancer, something that will cure cancer and stop people from dying from cancer. But here we've got the word counter as well. That just means yes, it neutralized the poison. It stopped the poison from being poisonous. It countered it, but of course, it still killed her. There you go. The remedy, the cure, the medicine, so on and so forth. It did counter or act against, or it kind of fought back against the poison. But in the process, it killed Beatrice as well. So, her father apparently, a doctor, knew that she had a weak constitution and exposed her to poison. I guess because that way, nothing on the outside of her could affect her or kill her. And the moment that it was neutralized, apparently, she died. Okay, the world killed her, or the shock to her system that this posed. Killed her, laid her down right there, and then laid her down in the dirt. It killed her. In the process, how sad! All right, everyone. With that, it's time for us to end our story. But don't worry, don't fret. The Chinese teacher is on the way. Good evening, students. Hello, I'm Hanny. We're going to look at today's grammar point. The first part of the grammar point says that the teacher. Giovanni 的教授给他一瓶解药，可以缓解那个毒。那这边用到一个单字叫做 counteract。我们来学它的字首字根。好 ，counter 这个字呢，这个字首啊，它表示相反的，或是跟什么什么相对应的。它常常会接在其他字词的前面。像 counteract 这个字的字首 counter， 它表示对立。那么 act 它有行动作用的意思。对立的行动，应该就可以联想到 counteract， 它有去抵消、抵抗、对抗的语义。好，那顺便补充几个有相同字首的单字。第一个 counterattack， 它的字首 counter 表示相反对立嘛，那么 attack 是攻击，所以合在一起 counterattack 就表示反攻、反击。这个字啊，它可以当名词或者当动词用。第二个是 counterpart。它的字首 counter 表示相对应的，那么 part p a r t 这个字在这边表示一方，相对应的一方就是用来表达对应的人事物。好 ，counter part 这个字常用来指说跟前面叙述相对应的人或是事物。假设我们前面有提到某一部电影的女主角，那你接下来就可以用 her male counterpart 对应的男性，那就是男主角喽。好，那么第三个单词。Counterclockwise. 好，我们知道 clock 是时钟，然后字尾 w i s e 这个副词字尾它表示以什么样的方式。先把 clock 跟 wise 合在一起 ，clockwise 就表示顺时针方向。好，那我们接着在 clockwise 前面再加上字首 counter 表示相反的，顺时针的相反不就是逆时针吗？所以 counterclockwise 就表示逆时针方向的。好，接着读到课文第二部分有一个句子是 in response。Giovanni suggested they drink from the bottle together and be cured. Giovanni 的回应是建议他们一起喝那一瓶解药，一起被治愈。那这边用到的句型是 suggest that 主词 should 原形动词。这样的句型是表达建议某人做某事，然后其中的 that 可以省略。That 子句里面的 should 也常常省略不用，然后只保留后面的原形动词。所以你就会看到 suggest。主词搭配原形动词的句型，像课文句子本来可以写作 suggested that they should drink from the bottle 什么什么的，它就是把 that 跟 should 都省略掉了。好，其实，在英文里面啊，表示建议、推荐、命令、要求或是坚持要怎么样，这些意思的动词都可以用到这个句型。那这些动词，我们主要可以把它分成四种类型。第一种呢，就是表达建议、提供，有包含像 advise。Propose, suggest 这些动词。第二个类型是表达强烈要求、请求，像是 ask 
demand, request, require 等等。那么第三种是表达命令指示，像是 command, order。第四种是表达坚决要求，像是 insist。好，那要特别注意哦。当 insist 表示坚持要求、坚决认为，它就可以适用于刚刚说那种 insist 加上 that 子句那一个句型。那么当 insist 它表示坚称，这时候就要把它当做一般动词来用。那我们来看两个例句。Her parents insisted that she should go see a doctor. 她爸妈坚决认为她一定要去看医生。He insists that the money belongs to him. 他坚称那笔钱是他的。这时候，这个 insist 就是当一般动词用。好，以上是今天重点整理，我们来回顾今天的单词吧。Professor Teresa stayed behind after class to ask her professor for advice about her research paper. Furious. Jeremy was furious when the airline told him that there were no more available seats on his flight. Confront. The main character in the book confronts all the people who have harmed her in the past. Remedy. My mom recommended that I try a natural remedy to relieve my sore throat. Counter. Henry countered his tiredness with several cups of coffee. Vein. The doctor inserted a needle into a vein in the patient's arm in order to take a blood sample. 